Welcome to my house. I'm Frumpy Buckle, and you're fishing with Uncle Buck. In this series, we're headed over to Quanskin Lake, Louisiana, and we're going to tackle the missions over there. I believe we got Exploration 3 of them, I think. Exploration 1, 2, and 3. <clears throat> and then we got the mission for the zombie bait, which you got to catch 40 gar, or 40, 5 gar, over 40 pound. Um, and that gets you the zombie bait, and then you can go after the zombie catfish that lives in that lake. I, one of the things I like fishing, about fishing this lake, is that the, the water is so crystal clear. You can actually see the fish take your bait in down in the water, 30 some inches down when you're flipping close in the lily pads. You can watch the fish, you, you, you know what fish is gonna hit your bait before the bobber ever dings. It's amazing. We'll get to see that. We'll get some of that on film. It's it's, it's pretty cool. So I I like uh, I like fishing this lake, and it's a it's a fisherman's paradise. You know, we've been going over in all the series here. We talk about finding fish, the ways to find fish, location, eyesight, reading the water, electronics. You know, and the main one that we utilize a lot here in this fishing planet is reading the water and eyesight, being able to see. Um, we talk about sunken trees and logs and weed beds and lily pads this lake is full of it full of all of them there's sunken boats there's sunken logs there's sunken trees there's lily pads there's weed beds <clears throat> there's deep holes it, it's a fisherman's paradise it's it's a it's a fun place to fish and we'll have a lot of fun going down there all right with that being said we're also going to talk about in this series, the three videos that we do, we're going to talk about shortcuts to finding fish. This is going to continue on with what I do in, in my videos. Is I try to teach people how to utilize the theories in this game out there in the real world. And uh, hopefully you become a better fisher person that way. So well, we're going to talk about these shortcuts to finding fish on addressing the entire character of an entire body of water rather than just running out there <clears throat> trying to find a spot and hitting that spot so we're going to talk a little bit and this is this lake right here gave us a good opportunity to do that so let's talk about where we're headed let's go over here all right we're going over to Quanskin Lake Quanskin Lake welcome to Quanskin Lake one of the best fishing destinations in the Pelican State situated in the northern part of a vast swampy wetlands of Louisiana known as the Mississippi River Delta this lake is among the most angler friendly coastal waterways in the region aside from the lake's swampy beauty its diverse vegetation and ecosystem provide home for countless species of feces including large mouth bass channel catfish spotted bass flathead catfish and the alligator gar let the cool spring breeze tickle your senses as you meditate over the clear still waters. And boy, when they say clear still waters, they mean it. Of Quatskin Lake, enjoying the proper day out fishing. All right, what are we going after over here? Well, they got alligator gar here, black crappie, blue catfish, bluegill, bowfin, chain pickerel, channel catfish, flathead catfish. We got freshwater drum, golden shiners, largemouth bass, the red ear, sunfish, smallmouth buffalo, spotted bass, the warmouth, white bass, and white crappie. A lot of different fish in there. So I said it's you can fish for just about anything you want in this lake. It's it's kind of cool. I like fishing it. So what are we gonna take? Our inventory. Well, we're gonna grab the jig winner 810 with a Bremer 5000 on him. We're gonna take. We're gonna take a telescopic rod. I, I love these guys because this you can catch a lot of fish here just flipping with a good strong telescopic rod, a flipping stick like I like to call them. So we're gonna take that guy with us. Our Nero 1410 match rod, Bremer 4000 on him. Now he's a level 15 pole. Um, this is a level 26 like The jig winner was a level 20 pole. We're going to take the Phoenix 1410. Now that's level 26 pole with a big river 6500 on him. We're going to take a Farcaster 8.6. He's level 25. And we'll take our <clears throat> Big Alley 1310 with the big river 6000 on him. He's level 20 pole. And last, we're going to take a heavy guy. 
There's a big catfish down here. So I'm gonna take this guy so I can yank a couple of them in real fast and we can make some money. You know, like I said, when we're gonna go somewhere, um, we do not wanna come home in the red. So we're gonna yank a couple of fish when we're done with these missions, get some of these big catfish out of there. I was down there and just caught a couple of nice unis. So there's, there's big flatheads in there, big blues, big channels. So. A lot of good fun there and those gars they're heavy they're heavy all right so what bait are we going to take let's get a pull up here with bait we're going to take our normal panfish bait that we always do for these guys so we're going to take we're going to take our red worms we're going to take some maggots we're going to take some night crawlers some mayflies leeches grasshoppers now, you know me i i carry my baits i have what i need i make sure whatever I gotta make sure whatever's hitting that day. Sometimes things aren't hitting. So we're gonna take our dough balls, our sal salmonella balls. We'll have them prepared for some of these little guys. We got a little bit of corn here for some of the catfish if we have to. They hit more on the medium cut baits. So we're gonna have some shiners. Do that, the medium cut, small cut. A couple of large minnows we might throw out there. I don't know. But we've got, com we, we're prepared. So we'll go grab them with that. Guys, make sure you get a license, and we will see you in Louisiana. All right, guys, here we are. We're at Quantum Lake, and this here is the Pelican Hut. Get out of the way here, so I'm not blocking anything. <clears throat> and there's like a little hut in here, and there's a multiple boardwalks that run all through this waterway that you can walk all through here get to all this area over in here now this is all fairly shallow water over in here and as you can see there are tons of weed beds and lily pads all through this waterway now your deepest holes in the lake are over here in this side and you've got like three three nice deep holes over here and then this place over here called cypress i think it's called cypress gardens over there cypress dreams okay cypress dreams there's another hole right over in here now where I like to fish, I like to fish this whole area here mostly from the, either this side or this side. And you, there, you can you can only reach some of the holes over in here because they're kind of in the middle and some of them from there. And there's a lot of the pan fish that we can catch right through these lily pads right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off over here. So this is the down south. Looks like we got good peak here for this morning. So we're going to jump over there. And we're going to see how much of these fish that we can pull out here. Now, for the first mission, we need a warm mouth, we need a bluegill, a golden shiner, a white crappie, the black crappie, a red ear sunfish, and the white bass. So we'll see how many of them we can get here. And if we can, I know some spots over in here where we, can, we might have some trouble getting the red ear over here. And, but I know we can get him over here. All right, so let's head over there. See what we've got going on. All right. Now. Away. Now, if you look out here, it's a little dark yet here this morning at five o'clock. This water is so clear. And you'll see when we start fishing here in a minute. All right, I got some red worms on here on a barbless number eight hook. Let's go ahead and turn this Nero into a flipping stick. You can do that for you PC guys with the F11 key. I don't know what it is for PlayStation, fellas. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's back up a little bit because that's going to throw it a little bit far. About here. Let's see. I want to be able to see that fish coming up and get that. We'll try it right.
But we'll give this a minute. And we'll start off with our <clears throat> with our shortcuts to finding fish while we wait for this fish to come up here and eat our red worm. One thing you want to do is, and, and that's the, study the character of a body of water. And that's look at look at the whole body of water, study the entire picture, and, and get a quick read on it. And you want to study the overall basin of the body of water that you're on. Like, what options does this body of water offer the fish? As you can see with this place, many, many options. There's so much cover. There's and we what are what are the five requirements of fish? You know, they gotta have sufficient amount of oxygen, which is adequate here, suitable temperatures, 68, water temperature 71, pretty sweet, adequate protection with all this vegetation and logs, perfect. What else do they need? Reasonable comfort. I don't think they have much stress worry about here. Not a lot of flow, so they don't have to fight currents. An abundance of food. Bingo. And look at him out in the water. What do we got there? It looks like a white crappie. Yeah. Could be. There he is. Do we got him? Yeah. A black crappie. Ah, I had, I, maybe didn't have my sun. Sun wasn't up enough yet. So we can mark him off the list. Black crappie, we'll keep him. Let's see what else we got out there. Back up one step, Tom, and throw it towards that hole right over there. There we go. Let's zoom in. We'll see who the next culprit is. Okay, so, yeah, you want to study the overall basin of this body of water. What options does it offer the fish? <clears throat> what kind of fishery is it? I mean, is it is it a shallow like dishpan lake? How, how many holes are in it? Um, are there weeds? These are the things we want to look for. And the other thing that you want to do is changes in depth could be you know, it, changes in the bottom composition. You know, it, does it turn from a, a silty bottom to a rocky bottom to a pebble bottom? Um, you can find this on a lot of maps. Now here in this game, if you use a bottom rod or a feeder rod, when you throw the rod out, and I use a lot of them when I'm fishing on a lake for the first time here, I'll use a bottom rod <clears throat> so I can throw it out, and it, and it tells me what type of bottom I've landed in and how deep it is. And, you know, I store that in the old Canogan up there. <laughs> That's about the only thing I've got room for is fish facts. Anything else, so. The bunny buckle asked me, forget it, I forgot all about it yesterday. But I remember how deep shit is. So, you want to look at look, things like that, because that change in bottom, that provides for fish. Gives them gives them something. What do we got there? I, was, I thought I saw one streak across there, but not yet. Now, the problem with a lake that's only got one deep hole is... Everybody and their mother-in-law fishes that deep hole on a daily basis. So, you know, you're going to be kind of screwed there on a lake with only one deep hole. But you go looking for other stuff. So when you have something that doesn't have a lot of structure, one of the things that you want to do is possibly take out a crankbait. Something that you can cover a lot of ground on if you're look dealing with not a lot of weed beds not a lot of structure you just got open water now remember fish live they deal with the habitat they're given if you know bass love weeds and lily ponds well what happens if you know there's air comes one it looks like a oh he's tugging ding 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 that's a white crappie i believe so Let's see you gonna run soon there buddy there he goes Ooh, that's your mind there's our white crappie. We can knock him off the list. But anyway, we need a golden shiner. I think that golden shiner's in there too. But he's, he's, we're early in the morning. So we'll try the, just the other side of this lily pad over here. There we go. Isn't this great? The, the, the clarity of this water.
Now, there's one thing. When we get over there after the catfish, uh, I was doing the same thing with catfish, and I could see the monster catfish come after my shiners. And I made the mistake of moving my mouse, and it touched that line on the water. And I was able to see just how skittish these catfish are because my line moving on that water scared that fish away. He did not take my bait. That was after the first ding. So you can watch him strike. And catfish are skittish, like I've said in a couple of videos before. You want to use smaller bobbins, bobbers, things of that nature to don't spook them. Don't move your mouse either. All I did was this, and it bumped the water, and he swam away. All right, so yeah, if you ain't got a whole lot of coverage out there, use a crankbait, something that you can cover a whole lot of water right away, and you can find these fish. You know, you don't want to try to pick certain spots and use a, something, a bait that's specific. Use a swimming bait, something that's going to cover a lot of water. See where you get your strikes at. Now, when you're looking at these waterways, are they heavily structured with many deep zones? You know, these can be um, these can be intimidating at first, because where do you start? Like a lake like this, when I first came here, I was like, whoa. And I went back and looked at my journal. I even wrote in it. I can remember. This was months ago. But I'm like, this place is really different. And it is. But it allows you to use all your fishing talents To go after these guys in this lake. So, and as far as structures go, if you're on a lake and you see, you know, assess the whole thing. If you see structure that's standing all by itself, mm, just because you have structure, that doesn't guarantee that it's going to produce fish. So, what I look for is structured elements grouped together in a close proximity to one another. So if you've got a, tr a fallen tree or maybe some brushwood here and there and a big rock here and there, because then that gives you your best chance because it gives you a better opportunity of all of your shallow zones to deep zones. It's just so much more variation in everything. So it gives a more overall environment for these fish, the bait fish to hide in. The game fish to go after them everybody's more comfortable with multiple structured areas so if you find those they're going to produce more fish for you now nothing's a guarantee however there's one part there's a structure in in, in waterways that will produce more fish most of the time than anything else. And that's what we call shallow feeding zones or what we call food shelves. It's where you have a shallow ridge next to a deep hole. And the best type of these have undulated like stair step ridges that go down into the deep hole. It's not a a gradual it's more of a, a chunk down a chunk down stair stepped there we go we got one coming there it's like another white crappie or it could be a bass he's got his back to me i can't tell him ah, it looks like a crappie there he goes another white crappie all right we don't want you buddy we need a golden shiner Try it back on the left side of this hole. 544. Should be coming right up on the peak here shortly. So this stuff with shelves. There we go. What's there? There's our golden shiner, looks like. I think we got him. <laughs> Where's my list at here? We can mark the golden shiner off our list. 
What do we need? We need a bluegill in the warm month and the red air sunfish and the white bass. All right, that white bass. Let's go over here. I think the white bass. Let's see what we grab over here. I like this little spot right here. Right by those weeds. And yeah, we're a little far out, but that should work. Let's see what we got by this power. Now, water clarity is another thing you want to look at. This is a prime example of that. Now, most fish, they're not going to spend a lot of time in clear water in the shallows. I mean, because they just, they, they don't have cover. You can see them. The water's bright. So the dirtier the water, it's going to hold your game fish in shallower water. There we go. Who's that running with it? Oh, he just dinged. That was a white crappie. You see him run there? Just a ding and a run. All right. So your clear water is going to produce your bigger fish at deeper depths. Your dirtier, the fish will come in shallow. So you're going to get your big game fish in clear water and shallow on overcast days. Those are the days you want to hunt game fish in shallow clear water when it's overcast. Stormy, right before night or during the night at dusk before the sun comes out. When the sun comes out, it's clear water. Go deep, go to cover, go to lily pads. There we go. There's one down there. Oh, come here, little guy. What are you? I hope you're one for the list. There's our wormuth. So we can get him off the list. <clears throat> All right, we need a bluegill out here. Keep him. There we go. All right, well, we'll wait on the next one. All right, guys, well... <clears throat> That kind of covered what I wanted to talk about for these waters ways and, and, and clear waters versus it and basically how, how to read a waterway. Checking over my notes here to make sure I didn't forget anything. So down. Okay, who's dinging now? Somebody is. There's a black, another black crappie. All right, let's we'll see if we can get that bluegill out of here. Gold shiner. I'm getting one of everything. I'm waiting for the bluegill. We got just about everything we needed on the list right out of that weed bed. Right out of that. Come on. All right. Wait on the next one. One tug in. He ain't a bluegill. Oh, dang it. I think. Nope. That's white crappie. Back in there and get him. All right. Oh, he got spooked. That was a big old bass. Got that bluegill. Come on, buddy. Don't miss him. Too long. There's our bluegill. 
Even more came off the list. Now we need the white bass and the red haired sunfish. I don't think we're going to get this red haired sunfish in that spot. But I think change this server because we can't get out there where that white bass is. I think we can get a white bass right there. Let's see how we do. Well, we got something digging here. We'll see what we get. Come on, fella, take it. There he is. I'll be damned. There's a red ear sunfish. We didn't have to go anywhere else. Thank you very much, Mr. Sunfish. All right. That white bass is there, too. We're going to go get him. That was a bad looking cast, wasn't it? That was up. Oh, Spotted bass. Well, at least now we're in the right species. All right. Need your cousin, buddy. Uh-oh. That was a bad one. Well, we'll see what we get out of that. There's our white bass. That's what we were looking for. So, that completes exploration number one, Quadskin Lake, Louisiana. That's a good deal there. Let's keep this guy before he goes goofy. We'll get him in fish nets. All right, well, what's our next one here? Next one, exploration number two. We get one bait coin for that, $2,500, and a frog popper, which is a very good lure. Three aught, number five eighths ounce, that's a good one. And the fish we're going after, and this is going to be the smallmouth buffalo. We're going to hit the, um, the channel cat, the blue cat, the flathead cat, and then we're going to hit the alligator gar. So the way this is working out, I think it's going to work out pretty good for us. We look at our map, we're just off this peak. We should be able to catch all them in this peak, the catfish and all. But we'll fast forward to there. And then the gar we got to get at night. So we're going to fish them from right here. So the two, two up close ones there, those are the, the gar spots. And the other two, the other three out there are catfish holes. And then that's a uni catfish flathead over there alongside of that other hole. So if we pull our map out and look, what we're seeing here is right here. We're going to fish them from over here. We're going to fish them from right here for these catfish. The bar will come back over here and we'll fish here for them. I think this one here was a little one 35 pounder and this one actually was a big one it was my trophy right there 76 pounder okay so if you got any enjoyment out of this one or you got any anything that you can take out there and use hit the like button for me Maybe hit the subscribe button. I got a lot more coming up. I've been on a little bit of sabbatical. I've been trying to put a pull in for my buckle bunny. So I've been busy doing that. Anyway, I'm trying to sneak some fish skin in. So let's let's go after these catfish. We'll see you in the next one. I want to thank you for watching. Remember, hit the like button, the subscribe. Follow me on Facebook. I'm out there. Search Frumpy Buckle. I think you might have to put the 107 in there. I'm not sure. We'll see you later. Yeah.